Hello everyone and welcome to another very nice game from the TCEC Super Final Season 15. It's Lila Chess Zero with the white pieces against Stockfish. Uh, a lot of you have requested this game and uh, we already mentioned in the previous game that we've shown uh, from this matchup that uh, if you enjoyed that one where Lila played that line with the black pieces, uh, maybe you would like to see the one where she played uh, with... Um, uh, with the white pieces. Uh, so it's the exact same line, but the game is completely different. So if you haven't seen game 61, a really uh, a brilliant game that Leela won with the black pieces, do check it out. It will be the first link in the description below. So just to get into, into the mood of this, uh, well, top chess engine competition, uh, do check that out before watching this game. So if you have done that, uh, congratulations, you are an excellent, you know, uh, prepare for the next game and for those of you who just uh, want to enjoy the show well you can also just watch the second one uh, but that being said uh, Lila opens the game with d4 uh, so it's the exact same line as uh, where uh, Stockfish had white and Lila had black knight f6 we have bishop to g5 uh, you remember the nice Trompovsky line knight e4 attacking the bishop bishop back to f4 and now c5 f3 kicking the knight back now we had this check uh, of course c3 blocks and now knight goes back uh, to f6 we have d5 uh, and here queen to b6 and now you remember that we already mentioned the pawn is under attack you can't defend with the queen because you also have to keep an eye on the d5 pawn so bishop to c1 the same as in the game where lila had the black pieces and here's where we deviate uh, so uh, the, the opening has been pre-arranged uh, up until this point uh, like uh, every every two games uh, uh, is the same and here d6 was played by Lila but here Stockfish goes for a different line Stockfish goes for e6 and it's now a completely different game than the one we've had where Lila had the black pieces uh, we have e4 by Lila e captures on d5 e captures on d5 and only now d6 uh, we have c4 by Lila uh, solidifying here in the center g6 preparing to finca to the, uh, the dark square bishops uh, and now comes queen to e2 check by Lila and now you don't want to block uh, of course you can't block with the bishop due to the d5 pawn but if you block with bishop to e7 then bishop to h6 is um, very unpleasant you're not really gonna castle you'll, you'll, you will still have to waste the tempo uh, unpinning this king and it's just a uh, uh, not a very nice position for black so here after queen to e2 we have king to d8 uh, Stockfish loses the uh, the castling privilege, uh, but uh, Stockfish has plans of uh, castling artificially later on in the game, as you'll see. So here there is one game in the database where Queen to C2 was played. Uh, Sergei Movsesian versus uh, Vasilios Kotronias in 2007 Aeroflot Open. But here Lila goes Queen back to D1. You have to make uh, room for your uh, light square bishop to be developed, and it is now uh, from move 12 that we have a completely new game. Uh, bishop to g7 by stockfish now have bishop to d3 and now knight f to d7 this knight is now preparing to come to e5 uh, to harass the bishop and the c4 pawn from from there uh, we have knight to e2 by lila knight to e5 as planned and now knight b to c3 like we mentioned you can't protect the bishop by let's say bishop c2 because you have to keep an eye on the c4 pawn so just knight b to c3 lila continues development and the bishop to d7 uh, we have castles by Lila and now knight to a6. Here making room for the king on c7, the rook can now come into the game and then the king can uh, go back to safety on b8. We have b3, uh, preparing to fianchetto the, the dark square bishop, also uh, putting more defense to the c4 pawn. Now comes king to c7 as planned, a3 now. Uh, with rook a to e8 and bishop back to c2 now lila is no longer interested in uh, allowing this tension to be in stockfish's favor uh, with bishop to c2 as now we already said that the b3 pawn defends the c4 pawn uh, and king to b8 so you can see that it took stockfish a while but stockfish was able to artificially castle uh, even though it took him some six moves to castle but the king is now very safe and now uh, stockfish can go let's say uh, f5 g5 g4 and start uh, the attack on the king side uh, we have h3 by lila and now f5 preparing g5 and g4 at some point uh, we have f4 by lila pushing the knight back also stopping g5 for the moment knight back to f7 and now rook to b1 here now lila is ready to push b4 and start the attack uh, on the queen side uh, we have rook h to g8 and now not immediately b4 because then this capture comes with check first you have to deal with your king uh, so after this rook h to g8 by stockfish king to h1 first and now queen to d8 stockfish doesn't want the queen uh, on the same file as uh, lila's rook uh, we have bishop to d2 
uh, grabbing more control of the b4 square and now queen to e7. Now this knight can't really move because you have to keep an eye on this knight and now bishop back to d3, putting more defense to this knight here. Uh, we have knight back to d8, preparing b6 and uh, after b6 this knight wants to come to b7 and control the a5 square which will be very important after Lila starts the attack on the queen side. Uh, and finally b4, everything uh, is you know, all the pieces are set perfectly and Lila is now ready to, to start the attack. We have b6 as planned and now, although uh, you want your b file open for the rook capturing here after knight captures doesn't really do all that much. After bishop to c2 and knight b7, uh, you will have a very hard time breaking this uh, structure here and you will not be able to continue your attack successfully. a4, knight comes to a5 and it's just a better position for black. So, after b6, Lila goes b5, pushing pushes back the knight and now wants to bust open the position with a4 and a5. Uh, we have knight to c7 and now uh, not a4 immediately, then again knight to b7 would be very strong. First queen to c2, uh, bishop to f6, now putting more pressure to the g5 square and only now a4 by Lila. Knight b7, a nice defensive move by Stockfish and now knight back to c1. Uh, maybe preparing knight to b3 and then start uh, pushing a5. The bishop from d2 will also very nicely be controlling the a5 square. Uh, and uh, since this knight will no, no longer be on e2, this knight can uh, also move. Uh, we have g5, Stockfish now likes uh, every, uh, <laughs> the position of his pieces and starts uh, uh, the attack on the king's side. We have f captures on g5, bishop captures on g5, and now knight back to e2. And here it's important to eliminate the dark square bishop as the dark square bishop controls the a5 square. So bishop captures on d2, we have queen captures on d2, and now knight to a5 preventing any pawn pushing on the queen side. Uh, and now that uh, Stockfish prevented Lila from successfully attacking on the queen side, now Lila transfers uh, the plants to the king side. We have rook to f3, uh, h5 now, and now rook b to f1. So nicely doubling rooks on the f file, and now h4. Uh, we have rook 1 to f2, uh, all the, uh, everything is nicely defended now, and the rook e to f8. Uh, and queen to h6. And here you have to... Uh, decide what to do. Uh, Lila is putting pressure on this pawn here, uh, there's also pressure on this pawn here and you have to be very quick to react uh, to, to defend all of them. First knight to e8, putting uh, more, more defense to the d6 pawn and now comes rook to e3. The queen is now under attack and you will not be able to defend anything, everything. Okay, the knight still is guarding this pawn and you can play queen d8 to keep an eye on this pawn here, uh, but then you get knight to f4. This knight is now coming here, it's going to be very unpleasant. If rook h8 the, uh, attacking the queen, then knight e6 uh, just the same. If, if rook captures, knight captures here, uh, the trade will be in Lila's favor, and if bishop captures, then queen captures on e6, uh, knight g7 attacking queen e7, and it will be just a, a, a better position for Lila. So, uh, Stockfish finds a more active way to treat this position, not queen to d7, but rather queen to f6. Uh, offering a trade of queens, we have queen captures on f6, knight captures on f6, and now rook to f4. Uh, Lila now puts pressure uh, on the h4 pawn, and again, if Stockfish goes with the passive uh, rook h8, then just king h2, this rook is coming to d7, and it's just going to be uh, a super active position for Lila. So, uh, after f4, uh, rook f4, Stockfish uh, goes for a temporary pawn sacrifice with bishop to c8. He frees uh, the d7 square for black knight, the knight is now coming to d7, and then to e5, from where, from e5, both the a5 knight and the e5 knight will go after the c4 pawn. So, Lila grabs the pawn, we have rook captures uh, on h4, which is now already very dangerous, uh, the dh pawn is now a passed pawn, uh, we have a knight to d7 as planned, and now knight to f4, going for the e6 square, and now knight to e5. So, for the moment, this uh, pawn is now under attack, you have to react to this, we have knight to e6, uh, attacking the rook, and now both the bishop uh, and the rook are defending the c4 pawn. So first, rook to f6, now threatening to win the knight and the, the pawn after the pawn is recaptured, and now just bishop back to f1, and not allowing knight captures and keeping an eye on the g2 pawn. Uh, we have rook back to e8, and now comes rook to g3. And now, finally, bishop captures on e6. d captures on e6, we have rook f captures on e6, and only now knight to d5. So, uh... Uh, Black Knight has the excellent e5 square, but Lila now created an excellent d5 square as an outpost, which is uh, a, a little bit more important than this knight being on e5. It's so uh, far away from the king, and there's not much action going on there. Whereas Lila's uh, knight on d5 is very, very close to all the pawns. 
Uh, there are, you know, a, a lot of sneaky ideas here. Maybe you can, uh, if, you know, everything is traded off and the kings are all uh, on the king side, uh, you know, maybe you can just uh, sacrifice here, push a5, and then after black captures, start pushing this pawn. Uh, it's just, uh, it's just better, better as there, there's more going on there. Uh, so, uh, first we have rook to g6. Stockfish offers a trade of rooks. Rook back to c3. Uh, now defending this pawn, uh, the knight uh, and uh, th this rook can now be activated as you don't, no longer have to defend here. You can start activating with rook to h7. We have rook to g7 and now comes uh, rook to h6 going after this pawn here. Uh, rook to g6 blocking and now rook back to h4. And here rook to f8. Uh, we have rook to f4, preventing this pawn from being pushed, and now rook back to f7. Uh, we have bishop to e2, hoping to win uh, the exchange with bishop to h5, but now just rook to g5. Uh, king to h2, uh, Lila improves the position of the king, and now knight back to g6, attacks Lila's rook. Uh, rook to f2, and now knight back to e5, and here rook to f1 by Lila. Uh, rook back to g8, uh, you could try something like this to go after this pawn, but uh, then g3 will just be very strong. Uh, the rook guards the g3 pawn and you can now start pushing your h pawn. Uh, so after rook f1, we have rook back to g8 and now comes rook to f4. Uh, rook uh, g to f8, doubling up on the f file and now rook to g3. Uh, now again, this rook and this bishop are guarding the c4 pawn, so for the moment black has no way of capturing it. Uh, we have rook to h8, and now comes king back to g1. We have king to c8, a stockfish also now tries to bring the king into the game, but rook to g5. And here, uh, there are problems for black. Uh, Lila managed to uh, wiggle in this rook uh, to attack the f5 pawn, and you don't have a good way of defending it. If you play something like rook h to f8 to defend it twice, then bishop to h5 is very strong. You, you force the rook away, the knight is controlling the f6 square. So after you move it, then comes the bishop g6, just a nice monster move uh, where you will win the, the f5 pawn uh, after you capture it and of course if knight captures then it's just a much much better position for white uh, you're attacking this pawn and there's no good way to defend it if you try and defend it with the king then just knight f6 check will win the rook on h7 if you try this then it's just a very passive rook you're gonna go g4 and uh, white will just be winning here you can't capture because the rook captures on f8 and then after black plays anything, you'll, you'll play either g5 or capture here uh, and start pushing your pass pawns to victory. So after rook g5, uh, we have knight to b3 by stockfish, now trying to uh, do something. This knight no longer has a purpose there, you're trying to reintroduce it into the game. Uh, we have rook g captures on f5, rook captures on f5, and now not capturing here because then uh, knight here attacks the rook and the bishop would be uh, very unfortunate. Rook f2, knight captures on e2, rook captures, and now rook to h4 uh, will just be very strong for black as both the knight uh, and the rook are now attacking the c4 pawn. Uh, so after rook captures on uh, f5, knight to e7 check. That was the idea. Uh, king to d7, and now just knight captures, recaptures on f5. We have knight to c1 attacking the bishop, and now bishop to f1, uh, just keeping an eye on uh, the squares that this knight can use to get back into the game. Rook f2, and now g4. So now, after all is said and done, Lila is up a pawn, but more importantly, uh, Lila uh, has two connected pass pawns on the king side, Stockfish has no pawns on the king side, which is just very strong. Knight back to b3, uh, and now rook to f2. Uh, we have knight to d2, uh, trying to get uh, uh, this pawn uh, on c4. Of course, if you capture the knight f3, check picks up the rook, so that's not possible. We have bishop to g2, and now we have knight d captures on c4. Uh, capturing uh, this uh, c4 pawn here. But here, Lila has another monster move. Feel free to pause the video here and try to find it. It's not a tactic or anything, it's just a very strong positional idea, uh, which really owns owns the board, uh, so to say. So feel free to pause the video and try to find this uh, very nice move for white. I'll give you a couple of seconds. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, you are just uh, an excellent finder of these uh, super moves. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, it's bishop to d5. And it's just a, just a beautiful idea, a nice centralizing move that uh, prevents the black from making any moves. 
Uh, now, you can't move this knight, uh, as you're going to lose the knight on c4. The knight on c4 is not protected, uh, of course, after this knight moves. And it's also one of the principles. You never want your knights to guard each other, especially uh, in a position like this. Uh, and the problem with moving this knight, okay, since this knight is guarded by the pawn, there are no immediate dangers there, you don't have a good square for it. You can't go here, you can't go here, you can't go here, e3 is guarded by the knight, uh, d2 and b2 are guarded by white's rook, as you can see here. Uh, and you can go a3 or a5, but, uh, you know, good luck coming back into the game after a3. And what are you going to do on a5? The, the, this knight basically spent the entire game on a5. Uh, and, you know, it just made a few moves trying to get back into the game. And now it's going to go back to a5. Not really, not really something. So here uh, you don't have a good move. Uh, here, uh, king to c7. Stockfish now has to wait and see what Leela does. Rook to a2. And now, uh, again... There, there's no good move here. Uh, if you just try and repeat moves, let's say king d7, white will just start bringing the king into the game. King h2, if you play this, king g3, if you play it back, h4, h5, king can come all, all the way uh, into the game and just simply win. So, uh, Stockfish tries knight to a5. It's ugly, but it's a move. Uh, we have king to h2, and now rook to e8. And now comes g5, preparing to push this pawn all the way. And not only on d5 uh, did the bishop do all of those things, but also it guards the g8 square, which is, of course, the queening square for the g pawn. Uh, rook back to f8, now comes knight to h4, getting the knight out of harm's way. Rook back to d8 now, preparing rook to d7 to control the g7 square. g6, rook to d7, guarding the g7 square. And now rook to g2, preparing to push it all the way. Here we have rook to g7, blocking the pawn. But now, as uh, well, once you have to use the rook to block the pawn and you're down a pawn, it's not a great position to be in. So now, uh, most likely all of you would be expecting, yes, the rook is now here, we have a knight here, why not knight to f5, we just push it away, uh, and uh, well, uh, for the moment it doesn't work, because uh, both the rook and the knight are, at, uh, sorry, both the rook and the knight are attacking the g6 pawn. But here again, Lila just finds a, a brilliant move, and feel free to pause the video again and try to find it. Uh, I'll give you a couple of seconds, uh, it's even nicer than the previous one. For those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, you are an excellent king marcher, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, the move is actually king to g3, and I know what you're thinking, but what about the g6 pawn? Well, if rook captures, then knight captures rook, of course, and of course if knight captures, then king back to h2, and now you lose the, <laughs> you lose the piece here. Uh, either rook will capture, or you will have to play something, capture the knight, and then just rook captures on g7 with check, and it's all over. So, uh, a brilliant move by Lila, king to g3, and now you can see that you cannot prevent this march. King is coming to f6, and it's a game over. Uh, we have c4, Stockfish starts pushing the pass pawn, but now king to f4. We have knight to b3, and now just king to g5. We have knight to c5, and now king to h6, attacking the rook, and now you can't move the rook. If you move the rook, well, you can't go here, bishop guards there. If you just move it, then the pawn uh, continues marching forward. So we have knight captures on g6, and now, uh, although you can capture with the rook, uh, but it would, uh, it, it is winning, but it would take Lila somewhat longer to win this game after c3. You would have to go knight f4, uh, c2, knight e2, block the c1 square, knight captures on a4, and... Of course, it is winning, but it would take some time. Uh, so Lila just played knight captures uh, on g6. This rook is now coming to pick up the pass pawn, so no surprises there. We have rook back to d7, and now comes rook to c2. We have rook to d8, now comes, sorry, not e7, rook to d8, and now comes rook captures on c4. Uh, rook to e8, and now h4. Uh, we have rook to e3, now comes h5. Uh, rook to d3 attacking the bishop, and uh, here... Uh, as it is in these engine games when both Leela and Stockfish decide that the evaluation goes over some point, that there is no point in continuing, uh, it is basically in this point that Stockfish resigned the game. Or they both agreed that Stockfish was losing and then the game was over. Uh, and a lot of you have, uh, not a lot of you, but some of you have said that I should have mentioned in the previous game, game 61 between Stockfish and Leela, where Leela had the black pieces, that uh, it was uh, very interesting how Leela... Uh, uh, Lila's evaluation uh, was showing that Lila was winning, but at the same time, Stockfish's evaluation was showing that it was pretty much a drawn game, so that's why the game lasted uh, uh, as much as it did, and, you know, uh, it took Stockfish a while to realize that, that uh, Stockfish was losing. 
Uh, but uh, here I don't know the, uh, what was the evaluation during the game uh, for Lila and for Stockfish, but if any of you do know, do share and I will of course give you a heart or, or pin your comment so everyone else can enjoy these nice facts as well. Uh, so not only did uh, Lila win game 61 and game 62, which is huge, winning the same line with the white pieces and the black pieces, so it means that it's not a problem with the line, uh, Lila is just the, the, uh, you know, the superior chess entity, uh, and uh, not only that, Lila won the entire Super Final. Uh, so uh, last season, in season 14, uh, Stockfish won the Super Final. Uh, Lila won the tournament, and then after Lila started the match with the superior version of Stockfish uh, from 100 games, uh, the result was, I believe, uh, 50 and a half to 49 and a half. Uh, so Stockfish won by one point margin. But here uh, in season 15, after 100 games, Lila won 53 and a half. At the 46 and a half, which is just insane, uh, you know, defeating Stockfish like that, it's, uh, well, I, I think it's just something that uh, we, we're going to have to get used to uh, ever since ever since Alpha Zero versus Stockfish, we've uh, learned that uh, uh, self-learning neural networks uh, are probably the future of chess and not your standard engines like Stockfish. And uh, I don't know if Lila will uh, participate in the next season of the top chess engine competition, as now it's pretty obvious that she will win and uh, both the uh, the championship and the super final. But uh, I, I hope uh, I hope that uh, they uh, continue and uh, to see how, how strong she can get. And maybe who knows if if the good people in deep mind will uh, you know uh, maybe like this maybe maybe we'll even have a nice short match at least let's say, let's say ten games uh, between Lila and Alpha Alpha would probably win all the games but it would still be uh, super enjoyable to watch and try to make sense of the moves. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, if you haven't seen it, do check out the previous game, Game 61, also very enjoyable. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Trevi Derviraj, um, uh, Dananjay uh, Bra Brad uh, Bradravaj, and uh, Nicolas Padao for your contribution to my channel. Uh, thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check to my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon uh, with some more hopefully interesting content. We have, uh, well, the, the Grand Prix Finals to, to check out, and uh, while we're waiting for the Nor Norway Altibox Championship, we're going to be continuing the Capablanca saga. Uh, thank you all, I will see you soon, and uh, have an excellent rest of your day.